What do you do at Milan? Uh, I'm a professor. What, um, what do you teach? I, AGI. I, I'm a master researcher. Uh, with a, a master researcher? Uh, is that, can, can you say that? Uh, I do robots and teaching them cool new tricks. Uh, I work on reinforcement learning. Researching in computer vision and neural architecture design. Have you heard of AGI? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> why, why would I be here if I never heard of this before? It's something that we have proceeded to move the goalposts ever since we invented something that is actually Turing complete. When people say AGI, what do you think they mean by AGI? Some artificial intelligence that is like humans. That can solve a wide range of tasks. Well, I would define it as an agent that can take any different kind of input and do some kind of action as an output. Like a very, I guess I'd see it as like a, a very advanced version of reinforcement learning. Do you think scale is all you need? Empirically, that seems to be the case. We add more and more parameters and it does seem to function better and better. Everybody agrees that scale increased capabilities dramatically. All you need for what? If you want to be as good as a human being, then maybe it's good enough. But if you want superhuman performance, or performance that um, is generalizable to uh, lots of different domains, you need some form of, of reasoning. Scaling has its limits, and I think its limits are probably far before AGI. There's something beyond scale that needs to be added, some additional secret sauce that is yet unknown to research. You need fundamental uh, RL advancements. If it has problems with like credit assignment, with exploration, this is not scalable by itself. What is scalable is the agent that collects its own data. I think scale is all you need. Statement was made to underscore the bitter lesson. You should be careful about where you invest your time in because if you go into nitty gritty details of rule-based expert systems, then maybe you shouldn't be wasting your time on those uh, methods that will not kind of survive the test of time. I came into AI because I saw it as like this very interesting field with a lot of math where, you know, we're trying to understand what learning really means. And if, you know, we don't even need to do that, we can just cheese our way out by just like adding a bunch of parameters and pre-training models. And then I, 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 guess I'll, I guess I'll go back to physics then. <laughs> piling more compute into the problem is again to me like piling more lead in, in a nut to crack this nut. I think there's a proper way to create a proper nutcracker because that's, for example, what CNNs make really well is they have a good inductive bias that results in them leading tendentially less data for now and less compute for now to achieve the same performance. When do you think we're going to get AGI? Maybe never. Maybe maybe soon. <laughs> I mean, science is science, right? And like people think that things are going to happen, and then they don't. Like in physics, they've been yeah, they've been talking about like room temperature superconductors since forever. And every year is the year of the room temperature superconductor, and it never happens. How many years? <sighs> hundred years, maybe, maybe two hundred years, I, I, maybe more. I think closer to like 10, 20 years than 50 years. At some point, we'd get to a point where like neural scaling laws do actually taper off in like, I don't know, 10, 20 years. And then at that point, we'd be like, well, we need to do something different. And then we'd review the hardware paradigm shift and we'd change the way we, you know, model like neural networks like on a computer to maybe something maybe neuromorphic something that better leverages this this fundamental structure that like neural networks has and then we just see another freaking neural scaling law over again and then we probably get there that's kind of like my my roadmap i was in berlin in my first ever uh cs conference in like 20 i want to say like 2010 or something um and there was a, um, a, a, a board, whiteboard where people could uh, put uh, like markers on, on like how far into the future uh, do they think like AGI is gonna happen. And like everybody was, it's like, like the mean was like in like 50 years from now. And this prediction has been true for the last, I don't know, like since the 50s or 60s, it's always like 50 years in the future. I don't think it's easy to predict that was, like, is even possible to predict what's going to happen in, like, I don't know, 50 years because it's going so fast? I think in 50 years or so, like 40, 50 years at least, but it, I'm not even sure. Certain uh, changes happen very rapidly. I think we have seen so this with stable diffusion, which I totally didn't saw coming, and I'm really surprised how quickly and how well this did. And right now this is basically a, a mini singularity with improvements happening basically every other day that seem to be incredible. Have you, have you heard of um, AI being an existential risk or AI alignment? 
this is people who take Neuromancer way too seriously. I, I don't see that because we need to put an AI without fail safes in such a position first for this to become this big of a threat. And I think people would be well aware that this is a problem. What do you think people mean when they say it's a service from AI? Bad AI just wakes up and kills everyone because it's better. But I like don't see how this happens. I think we're pretty we're pretty terrible at doing things like that. Do you think do you think AI could uh, be an existential risk? Uh, yes, yes, I think so. Uh, if we really build these survey agents, uh, I don't know if the time uh, we probably don't agree on the like time frame. But when we reach that kind of competency. Uh, it can be an existential risk uh, in m multiple ways. In multiple ways. What is your chance of exaggerating from AGI? I don't know. It depends what lab creates it and what method we're using. But like, if you want a truly uh, general intelligence, then you need to like raise it basically like a human child. You need to like give it like a moral compass. You need to uh, have it have uh, like motivations and goals and shit. And um, you can't have this without alignment. What do you think is AI alignment? There are two cases in which I can think uh, an agent can be not aligned with, uh, with you. And the first case, while you were uh, writing or thinking about your reward function, you forgot of something, you made a mistake or something. So the, the reward function that you have does not fully specify the um, preferences that you have about behaviors. The alignment in two ways. Kind of we align the computers to our will. Machines should be kind of bent to our will, kind of a, a servant uh, uh, relationship with the human being, right? We tell it what to do and it does that thing. The problem is what we want, we cannot express very concisely with any single objective. That is a problem. That's why alignment to me is an interactive process that takes time. It's a process. You want uh, machines that understand our values and don't need a lot of uh, guidance in order to specify them. It also depends what exactly you mean by alignment because, okay, to me, I'm just kind of following the Jacob Steinhardt recent, well, not so recent anymore, paper on uh, unsolved problems in uh, machine learning safety, right? And in a sense, there is a range of problems with good old classical robustness being problem number one. Uh, robustness to distribution shifts or adversarial, it is part of AI safety. Do you think the majority of people are aligned with society and never do bad things? The majority of people, yeah. By alignment with human values, you don't have to mean with overall human values. You don't imply that before you create objective ethics, you cannot solve alignment. It could be alignment with that particular user, particular human. You were saying this a few days ago, and, and, and now I convince you that the alignment could be just like for a particular human. Well, you, you convinced me because over this weekend, I rented an uh, electric car, and I was driving it, and I realized that we don't need to go into any treacherous turns and X risk to realize the importance of the lack of alignment with your electric car that does things, uh, actually sometimes in uh, kind of situations that may relate to safety, like what we can do if you give the capabilities to the system to learn interactively from interacting with the user, not necessarily, you can, you can make analogies with raising a kid and interacting with a kid and teaching kid values and proper behaviors, or it can be even adult, but you need to interact with the system because there are so many ways things can go wrong that you cannot possibly think ahead of time during pre-training and design all possible things. You can work with the system and let it learn with you. Uh, it is a bit time consuming, but it's also time consuming to raise humans, right? I mean, it seems to me that there's a whole spectrum there where the human kind of could get some feedback about how they um, might, ch might change their, their constraints in order to become more in line with what the machine can do. Have you, have you considered like um, those like instrumental goals that humans have of, you know, um, surviving and like not being turned off for an AI? In the end, this is just a sequence of linear, uh, of uh, linear, non-linear, like matrix op or tensor operations, to be more general. And I really don't attribute any agency or something to that. It's true that if at some point we build better AI that can actually like understand the world in a suitable way, like building such general systems is like really a bad idea. 
but I guess what I disagree more is like the the idea that we already found the principles that will give general AI and we just have to scale. We're not gonna like snap your finger and immediately have the full-fledged AGI that can do anything in your house. We'll have like a shitty version of it that can do like a very small subset uh, and then we'll see some errors and then we'll go from there and like slowly increment. And to the, sorry, to get back to the other thing, existential risk. Like this is the reason that I don't believe that we have this existential risk and that we will organically get more people like working in alignment research uh, just because it gets more famous. Like once we see uh, like robots come out with more functionality and like um, software systems with more like cool features, uh, we have more people interested in making sure that they're not like fucking up with a, with a monkey misclassification. Subjectively, it seems to be having even steeper gradient than scaling field alignment it will probably grow exponentially in terms of the number of people and groups working on that. Most of the like real life research in, in deep learning and like making progress as a field is not necessarily towards AGI. Like the people uh, that are actually like working towards AGI, I think scale with uh, the number of people working on alignment. I think the two are correlated. So I have I, I couldn't even give an estimate. I don't, I, I'm new here. So I like, even within Mila, I'm not even sure what the, the scale of that is. Like even in this institute, we have like what, 500, 600 people uh, and like some 30 professors, one or two like working towards like better, uh, sorry, like, like working towards AGI. The rest is like new mathematical models or new computer vision models or new RL methods or something like this. In just three days, you become much more alignment pilled. You seem much more. I drove that electric car. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any, any final words uh, for, for our listeners? Like, do you think scale is all you need? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but more people need to do, need to get into robotics and uh, get their hands dirty uh, and like make cool stuff that actually works in the real world. Ethan, she 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 said you cannot train AGI with all of YouTube. You need to jump in. <laughs>